Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how we can create an NFT card app thing that I made. And I think this looks pretty sleek. And I'm especially proud of this bottom navigation bar that has this glass frosted effect so you can see behind it as well. So I'm going to show you how to make this by jumping into the code. Now, just before we jump straight into the code, Let's have a look at the design and just using a pencil, let's have a bit of a plan about the structure of this app. So what I mean is let's just divide up the components of this app. Say for example, if we look at this first page, I'm going to split the top section here. This is obviously going to be our app bar. And maybe we'll make it kind of a custom app bar because this one seems quite large. And if you look below that, we can see that there's a bit of a tab bar situation going on here. So recent, trending, top, and so on. So we want to have a tab bar here. And then if we click on each of the tabs, then we're going to show these cards. Okay, and so each of these cards will have to make in a separate file. And we'll just call it card. And the last component here is the bottom app bar or I should say bottom nav bar and one thing about this bottom nav bar is, is it's got a kind of cool glass effect and so I actually made a tutorial earlier about glass morphism kind of this frosted glass looking situation and so I think that design is going to look pretty good on this app. So I'll show you how to do this by jumping into the code. Now, usually in my tutorials, I like to create everything from scratch, right? So from like zero to the end result, just because I think it helps a beginner, especially to get a good picture on how someone can make an app. But at this point, I've made so many tutorials, especially on individual widgets. So if there's any widget in this video that you don't understand, just look up on YouTube you know like tab bar mitch coco and you should be able to find a video that i dedicated for that specific widget so in this video i'm just going to focus more on how we can bring all of these pieces together because i made a nice sort of template for us to begin our app and like i said the most uh, important widget for this ui is a tab bar which is this tabs up here that we can cycle through and so, like I said, if you need more specific instructions on how we can use tab bars, go to my separate tutorial covering just this widget. With that being said, just to keep everyone on the same page, in my main function, I'm running my app, which is giving us this home page. And if we look at the home page, I've kind of pre built some nice template for our UI. And so I'll kind of go through everything that I made and I'll put the entire code on my GitHub below so you guys can take a closer look at it. But if we just look at the home page for a second real quick, this is the page that you see on the screen right now. And so I've got my scaffold here and we're gonna have to wrap this in a default tab controller so that we can use these tabs. And in my list view, I have two main components, which is the my app bar first of all. That's the one on the top. And then we have my tab bar, which is this stuff. And so each of these individual components, which I kind of custom made, you can have a look at the project structure or the project folders rather. And you can see I organized the different parts of the app into nice folders here. So if you look at the components, there are three major components that I want to use in this app, which is the app bar, the bottom bar, and also the tab bar. So I'll go through each of these ones. And just starting with the app bar, this one is not a very complicated app bar, but I put it in a separate file here because this particular UI is quite large for an app bar. So I'm just going to create my own row that has a title text widget and also a search button. So that's my title text widget and my search button here. And also when you build this app bar, you have to give it two specific things, which is the title and also what happens if you tap on this search bar. So if you come back to our home page, you can see here is my app bar and you have to give it a title and also an on tap function. And so I just created a quick search button function here, which 
executes nothing. So you can put your code logic for the search function here if you need. And then if we look below the app bar, we need to put in a tab bar. And so if you look at this tab bar component, this is where if you need more understanding on how tab bars work, then as I mentioned at the start, just go look at my separate tab bar tutorial. But just to give you a quick overview of what's going on, I've got a column because we need two things. And the first thing is a tab bar itself, which is this at the top. And then once we click on a particular tab, we have to display something below it, right? And so that's what we're going to use for a tab bar view. And that's where we're going to put like NFT cards here. So to use this tab bar, we have to give it a list of tab options. And so if I come back to my home page, I'm going to use three tab options. So recent, trending and top. So that's just the name of the tabs I want. And then if I click on one of these, then I want to show the recent tab, trending tab and the top tab. Okay. And so these are the components. You got the pages and then I got another separate folder for the tabs. And so these are the three recent top and trending tabs, which if you click into it, it's just a container in the middle and we have a text widget just saying first tab. Click on this one, it says second tab and then third tab. So this way we can kind of organize our code very nice and neatly. And then so once we create our app bar, then let's create our tab bar. And then remember, we have to give it this list of tab options. And so I'm just going to give it my list of tab options. And this way we can create these three tabs. Cool. So if we look at our components, the three major components, we have the app bar and then in the middle we have the tab bar. And I also created this bottom bar, which if we click into it, it's just a bottom navigation bar, which I've also made a separate tutorial for. So I'm not going to go through this in detail, but essentially it's just a basic bottom navigation bar, which requires an index to know which option we're on. And also what happens if we tap on one of these buttons. Now, if we go back to our homepage, I haven't included my bottom app bar. So let's do that now. So if you look under the scaffold, we should be able to see a bottom navigation bar option. And what did we call it? I called it my bottom bar. So just start typing my bottom bar and there it is. So let's press tab to import. And it's got a red squiggle because we have to specify a couple of things. So the first thing is the index. Um, so this is the options between zero, one, two, three, four. So let's just say zero for now. And the other thing is the on tap. What happens if we tap on this function? And for this one, I'm going to say handle bottom index change. And let's create this up here. So bottom nav bar navigation. And I'm going to say void handle. So this function here. And instead of specifying zero, let's actually put in a variable. So current bottom index. So I'm going to create an integer called current bottom index. And let's just say it's zero at the beginning. And then when we click on this button, you can see it's red because it needs to pass through an integer. Right. So I'm going to say integer index. And so here we can then set the state and change the current bottom index to whatever the new index is. Cool. So that's how we implement the bottom navigation bar and you can see, so it looks like we can see the icons here, but it doesn't have a background color. So if you want a background color, let's go back to our bottom bar file and you can see the background color. It looks like I specified it to be transparent. So if you want to change this up, let's say blue, then there it is. So this is what the bottom nav bar actually looks like. Later, I want to just change this back to transparent because I want to kind of include this glass effect. So we'll do that a little bit later. So for now, let's just leave it as blue. And the main thing that we need to implement now is the actual 
NFT cards that we can swipe through. So for this, we're going to need some images, which I have prepared over here. So in my images folder, I have these three NFTs. So go to your project folder and in the library, let's just drag that images folder in. And we have to tell the project that we just imported some assets. So go to your pubspec.yaml. And if you scroll down, we can see this asset section. So let's just comment this out. And we have the images in library slash images folder. So let's save that. And cool. So we have it here now. And in our components, I'm going to create a new folder. So this will be the last component that we need to make. And let's call it NFT card. And let's import our material dot dot. And let's call it NFT card. If I just return an image dot asset in here, we can specify where our images like the path of it. And so we had it in library slash images slash Let's just pick one of these ones. APNs number one, PNG. And so if I just save this and in my home page, we want to display it in this tab bar. If we go to the tab, let's just put it in the recent tab. So right now I'm just displaying a text widget that says first tab. But instead of that, let's introduce our NFT card and let's import it. Cool. And if we save this, the image will just show up. And of course, with this image, the corners are so sharp and it's very close to the border. So let's kind of decorate this up a little bit. OK, first thing is I think we can get rid of this center widget and we can get rid of this container as well. So I've just got the NFT card and let's just make this NFT card a bit more prettier. So you can see the corners are really sharp and I want to add some padding as well. So grab this image. I'm going to add a padding first of all. I think we could go with a bit more padding. Cool. And let's wrap this image in a widget called clip R rect, which stands for clip round rectangle. And so you can specify this border radius let's say like 12. Now it doesn't look like that worked because one thing that we need to do in the image is to specify the fit. And so I think we should go with box fit dot fill. Cool. So this should just fill the rest of the space. Now, one thing about this is in terms of the padding and the border radius and this box fit, I want to keep that constant and what I want to change is the image inside, right? So let's come up to the top here and let's accept a string and let's call it image path. And let's create our constructor for it. So we're going to require this image path and then we're going to give that image path over here. So this way you can see it's red in our recent tab because now we have to give it an image path. So I'm just going to specify that here. Cool. So nothing should have changed, but for the fact that we can now reuse this NFT card. So if you go to the other tabs, so we just did recent tab. Let's go to the top tab and just give it the NFT card. And this one, let's say library slash images APNs number two. Cool. And there it is. And then the trending tab as well. Sweet. And actually our picture is looking a little distorted. Let's go back to our NFT card. And this box fit, I think we should go for cover maybe. Yep. So I just want to keep the proportion the same while still filling up the rest of the space. Cool. Which finally brings us to 
the bottom bar, right? So this bottom bar is looking pretty ghetto. It's looking pretty um boring, right? So if you look at my theme folder, I have this glass box that I created. And this one is, again, another tutorial that I made separately specifically for this glass box. And I think it's called Glass Morphism. So look that up on my channel if you need. But essentially what I made is using this backdrop filter, I can give this glass box a child and it will have a nice transparency effect. So let's see how this looks. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually go back to my bottom bar. And remember, I want this to be transparent. There it is. And then in our home page where we implemented the bottom bar, I'm going to wrap this with a widget called glass box, which is what I created. Sweet. And it looks like that didn't really work because in our scaffold, we actually have to specify one more property, which is this extend body. And it's a Boolean. And I want to make this true. And there it is. You can see that there's that glass effect. If you just scroll down and there's a image behind it, it's like all blurred out. And so this glass frosted effect, which I call glass morphism, I made a separate tutorial for. So check it out if you need more detail on that. But all the information is in this glass box file. And it's essentially just a blur and just putting some blur on X and Y axis. So I think this looks really good. And by the way, this extend body, if you actually read it, it says, if it's true, then the body extends to the bottom of the scaffold. So originally when we have this to be false, the image, it will, page will only cut up to there, but now we can kind of extend it below the body which is what this is saying. Now this is looking pretty good so far, but one more thing to make this even more aesthetic is I want to change up this default font. So let's go to our pubspec.yaml and I'm going to introduce a Google dependency, a Google font dependency. So Google fonts, um, and I want you to use specifically this version number because for some reason, the latest versions are giving me some trouble. So I'm just going to go with 2.0. So save that. And then let's find in our app bar in the components where we have the title. And you see this text style is just a default text style. So now you can start typing Google fonts. So there it is. Let's press tab to import it. And my personal favorite is this font here, the Babus. So they should be quite small. Yeah, you're gonna need to um, rebuild this. And you can see there the font changed. So I'm gonna make this font size, let's say 60. And that's looking quite big, so let's go with 54. Sweet, and if you rebuild this so that it re-renders this properly, I feel like this little different font it's a small touch, but I feel like it makes the app look and feel a lot different rather than just using the default font. So I really like this Babers font. And I think this is looking really aesthetic, especially this frosted glass situation. You can see behind it. And I think that makes things look a little sweeter. Sweet. So that's basically all I wanted to show you today. Like I said, I'm going to put this entire code on my GitHub and I'm going to link it below so you guys can take a closer look at it. I've only got one page right now, which is the home page, but we should create more pages as we click around here. So bottom navigation bar is also another separate tutorial I made. So check that out. And I think Flutter is really amazing at making UIs that look nice. So play around with it and let me know if you have any questions that you are not sure of. I'll try to come around and answer them. But other than that, that's it for today. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.